So as the last thing during this session, I will be testing the Extreme Con Roll, the X6800. It's pretty much like an E6600 CPU with unlocked multiplier. So there are two versions, there's the X6800 and QX6800. So uh, X6800 is, well, like I said, extreme version of E6600 and QX6800 is like an extreme version of the Q6600. Uh, it's pretty much the same story as E6600, just unlocked multiplier, so we shouldn't have any FSB limitations whatsoever with the CPU, like what is the main issue with the E6600, which is why you need to be in for so high FSB. I think we can stay somewhere around 500 FSB. I think the CPU should be able to do it, at least when it's on LN2. Not all of these CPUs can even run 500 FSB on air and water cooling. So uh, this time around I'm actually using the P5E3 Premium based on my knowledge and experience. What happened with the E6750, which is pretty much the same CPU as E6600 as well. So uh, I had a lot bit of performance with the P5E3 Premium compared to Rampage Extreme on the E6750. So let's see what happens with the 6800. The only thing that might look bad or did look bad is the VID. When I checked the top spots on hardwarebot.org, the VID value on the highest CPUs, which were doing like close to 5.8 GHz and so on, they had a VID value of 1.225 and this CPU has a VID value of 1.325. I got this CPU with my best Rampage Extreme from Japan. I never tested the CPU at all. I only checked that does it boot on air and water cooling. So uh, this is pretty much the first time experience with this new uh, CPU model and straight on LN2. So uh, it should be the same situation as all of these CPUs like this far, but uh, will be very interesting. So let's see what happens. So uh, I have Windows XP and Server 2003 already prepped. Tests what we'll be running is the, uh, they are the same as before. So W Prime, Super Pi, Pi Fast. So uh, let's see what happens. I'll uh, start pouring and I'll get back to you in the operating system and let's see what kind of clock speeds we can actually achieve. Okay, so finally managed to boot around 5.3 on LN2, minus 135 to minus 140. So uh, let's see what happens. So we could start with something like Pi Fast. Efficiency will not be the best possible because I haven't tuned like uh, performance level and everything to the max. 17.77 highest score is 17.08 uh, so still like uh, 700 milliseconds away but of course we can see what happens okay so uh, record score with one attempt in uh, uh, W prime 32 so uh, previous top score was by Matt at 15.257 and this is 14.922 uh, thanks to better operating system tag used Windows Vista which is absolutely unnecessary for this test. A good XP can always outperform Windows Vista. So next one will be 1024 amps soon. Funny, I thought it crashed. I was just about to reset the whole system because I was running the whole thing with frozen screen. But anyway, so uh, 
that should be the new 1024M top score at 450 seconds. So 450.266, I think it's uh, so it's over half a minute faster than the previous top score by tag in Windows Vista. So like 30 sec 37 seconds faster, so a very clear new rank one score if you ask me. So 5468, the frequency tag used was like a bit under 5.3 I think. P5E3 Premium, 0803 BIOS, memory is close to 2000. So now we have W Primes, everything, now we need to move on to Super 5, 32M, 1M, etc. And that's the new Super 32M top score with the X6800. Almost sub 9 minute run, but I don't have much LN2 left, only like few liters. So I didn't want to push it too hard, so I wanted to play it safe. So 5425, and memory is at 1970 plus ish. 67520, 60 common rate 1, latest BIOS on the P5E3 Premium. So. Uh, Pretty good, I guess. Yeah, I didn't even set many of the uh, uh, sub timings like manually, so it should be like so. But yeah, so now I'm only missing one M and the CPU Z core frequency validation. And that's the best run for Pi Fast, 16.88, the first ever sub 17 second run. And okay, that's pretty much it when it comes to the Core 2 Extreme X6800 CPU overclocking results. As this was my first time experience with the X6800 CPU model, I think the overall outcome was pretty alright. So I managed to get 4 out of 6 of the important top scores with the CPU, and if we start with W Prime 32, my best run ended up being 14.11 seconds, so that's like a bit over one second improvement over the previous top score made by TAG from Austria. I got a few 14 point something second runs in W Prime 32, and I think I could have gone even under 14 seconds if I really wanted to, but I didn't have that much LN2 remaining for these tests, so I just wanted to move on. Uh, 1024 m a pretty nice over half a minute improvement over the previous top score made by TAG. I think the, uh, I think the actual score is somewhere around like seven and a half minutes now. So pretty good if you ask me. PyFast, I got a few runs that were a bit over 17 seconds and my best run ended up being at 16.88 seconds at 5.5 gigahertz plus. And that's like 200 milliseconds faster than the previous top score made by some guy from Italy. 
Then lastly, Superbuy 32M, I only ran that test once because I was running out of LN2. I ran it at relatively safe speeds and my run ended up being like pretty much at spot on nine minutes, like nine minutes and half a second or so. I would have liked to see the run being well below nine minutes, but I can obviously return to that test later if I want to. So nine minutes, nine point something, I'm nine, nine minutes and like half second, that's like 11 seconds faster than the previous top score made by TAG once again. The remaining scores that I didn't get were CPU-Z, Call Frequency Validation and SuperPi 1M. Both of those runs are definitely out of reach for the CPU, especially the CPU-Z Call Frequency Validation. The maximum uh, frequency for this CPU is somewhere around like 5.6 to 5.64 and the current Highest frequency is made by Elmore from Sweden at 5.85 GHz, so that's definitely out of reach. So I need to find a better CPU for that test or for that score, and if I manage to find a CPU that could go by close to 5.9, it should be able to do pretty huge scores in all of the uh, uh, available tests, which we already ran. So. Uh, yeah, no validation and SuperPy 1M, the current rank 1 holder is by One Page Book from Taiwan, who was actually a, a pretty famous overclocker back then. So his run from 2006 is still the rank 1 score for the X6800 CPU model on hardwarebot.org. The weird thing is his efficiency as it's pretty much like through the roof. His run was a tiny bit over 8.9 seconds. I think the uh, accurate result is 8.906 seconds at 5.55 gigahertz in the screenshot. I don't really believe the, the frequency that's uh, displayed on the screenshot as it's uh, very low for that performance. I tried every possible tweak that I know of for 1M, even the ones that we use for the more new Wolfdale CPUs etc. and I just cannot match his efficiency in SuperPi 1M. My best run ended up being a tiny bit under 9 seconds, like 8.984, and I'm uh, almost sharing the rank 2 score with that Italian guy. So I'm rank 3 at the moment, and the rank 2 score from that, Itali from that Italian guy is like 4 milliseconds faster. But anyways, if I find a better CPU that could go much higher on the actual frequency, I should be able to take down even the 1M and also the validation, but that will be for the next time in the future. So a uh, pretty good outcome overall and yet another 775 CPU that I've overclocked during my overclocking career, if you can call it that. But anyways, all of these scores will be uh, uploaded to hardwarebot.org, so definitely check them out if you are interested in them and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching some of my legacy overclocking content once again, and I will see you on the next one.